What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to unlike a blog post with Django and Python. Alright guys, in the last video we looked at creating a like button, in this video we're going to do an unlike button. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, it is Friday morning here in Vegas, going to be a beautiful day out, and like I said, in the last video we did this like button, but what if we want to unlike a post after we've already liked it? That's what we're going to do in this video, and it's not too tricky kind of fun. So we should be able to knock this out pretty quick. So let's head over to our code. And let's go to our views.py file. And let's look at our like view. So we're looking up a post by ID, whatever the post ID was that we click for our liked view here. So if we click this, it sends the post ID here. And then it adds a like for whatever user click the like button, right? So we've got this table that keeps track of if somebody's liked a thing or not. So we can dip into that sort of and see whether or not a person has liked the post already. If they've already liked it, we'll get rid of the like button because they've already liked it and we'll replace it with an unlike button or whatever, right? So let's start out here. Let's create a variable and I'm just going to call it liked and we'll just set this equal to false to start with. Now we can go if post dot likes because we've already looked up our post right here. Right, so we can say post.likes.filter. And then we can filter by ID equals request.user.id. We can say if it dot exists, right? So right here we're passing in the request. And the request contains the person's user ID if they're logged in, right? So if we're logged in and we're user one, we can say, hey, look up whether a like has been liked by user one. And if it exists, then do something. Well, what do we want to do if it exists? So if it exists already, and they've clicked the button again, that means they're unliking, right? You're not going to like it twice. We're going to make sure that they won't be allowed to like it twice. So if they've clicked anything, it has to be a dislike button, which we'll create in just a minute. So if they're clicking it, it means they're and, it, and they exist, it needs it means we want to remove them, we want to unlike the post. So to do that, we can just go post dot likes dot remove and then we can remove by request dot user right else and I missed a colon there at the end of our if statement so else if it doesn't already exist that means they're liking it for the first time and in that case we need to just add them and we've we did this line of code in the last video so we'll just put it up there like that and in that case we want to change liked to true. And up here, we also need to make sure and, and put uh, liked as false. All right, so after they've unliked it, then liked will be false. After they've liked it, liked will be true, All right? Makes sense. And then this line of code is just returning from the last video back to the page. So okay, that's our like view. But now, we need to actually do this on the article detail page itself, the article detail view, which is our, let's see, article detail view right here. So here we're already passing some context in, and we're gonna need to pass more context in now. We need to pass that liked variable in. And to do that, we've already looked up, you can see right here, stuff. We've already looked up the post by ID and named it to stuff. So we can riff off of that stuff thing right now. So let's set liked here to false. And then we can go if stuff dot likes dot filter and we're just doing the same thing here. And we want to ID by self dot request dot user dot ID. We want to say if it dot exists, then simply set liked to true. Right, so this is so look, if stuff dot likes dot filter by the requesting user ID, which is basically the same thing that we just did up here in our like view, 
Only here it was host.likes.filter request user ID, right? Down here in our article view, it's stuff because right here, stuff because we called this stuff earlier. If we called this post, then we would change that to post, obviously. And here we just, the only difference is we're doing self because in this function, we pass that in as self instead of just as request, right? And then just make this true. So now all we have to do is pass this liked variable in through our context thing right here. So let's go context, create another one of these. And, and I'm going to call this liked and set it equal to liked. So now we can use this liked variable on our page, actual uh, on our actual HTML page. So let's save this and head over to our article detail page. And let's look down to where our like button is right here. So now let's create some logic. Let's say if liked, if liked exists, that means like is true. That means if we've, if liked is true, it means we've already liked a thing. In that case, we want them to unlike it. So let's actually first get rid of, move this total likes down. And I'm going to copy this and paste it twice. So if they've already liked it, we don't want the like button to appear anymore, right? We want the, the unlike button to appear. Let me just tab this over this one too. So instead of it saying like, let's say uh, unlike, right? And instead of the button primary, let's go button danger. Now this is a bootstrap button and a danger button is red. I just happen to know that you can go to the bootstrap website like we've done in the past and look up buttons and get any color you want. But I figure an unlike button should be red. So we'll just do danger else. And let's just end or if while I'm thinking about it and if so anyway else use the regular like button. So if somebody's already liked it, then we want to unlike else they haven't liked it, we show the like button, right? So that should do the trick. Let's save this head back over to our website and hit reload and boom, now it says unlike. If I click this, boom, it goes down to one like and our like button reappears. Now if I click this again, boom, it goes back to like or it goes back to unlike and we have two likes. Now, one thing we do need to worry about is being logged in or logged out. So we want this to be able to only work if somebody's logged in because we can't keep track of somebody liking a post if we don't know who they are, if they haven't logged in. So it, right now, if we click log out and click this like button, we get an error, right? So we need to actually come over here to our code and we want all of this to only show up if the user's logged in. So if user is authenticated, so let's just wrap all of this in that tag. And we can go else must be logged in to like or log in to like. And let's give this a small tag to make it real small. So let's save this, head back over and see what we got here. Oops. Oh, didn't end our if. <laughs> Always forget that. And if. Boom, tag that in. Okay, so it looks good. Let's head back over here and reload. Log in to like. Two likes. Oh, we've got some errant things there. What did I do? <laughs> okay, get rid of those. It's Friday. Cut me some slack. So log in to like, two likes. If we wanted to, we could use this login link right here, right? So let's head back over to our base.html and let's look around for our login. Right here, we could just grab this URL. Well, actually, we could just grab this whole thing. Copy it. Head back over here and for login, we could just paste this in, get rid of this class nav link. We don't want that. We just want this URL login. So we could say login to like. And if we save this, head back over here, boom, login to like. We click here, goes to the login page. We can log in. And now we're back to being able to like or unlike. If we go back here and let's pick something that hasn't been liked just to make sure, boom, one like, boom, zero likes. So pretty cool. So not that tricky. If we want to look through this one more time, we can head up to our like that or our like view. All we're saying here is, hey, look up the post, look up the likes in the post with 
the user ID. So if Bob, Bob's ID is three or whatever, if Bob likes the post, that means it exists. Well, if it exists, that means we need to remove it because we wouldn't be clicking this button if it existed unless we wanted to remove it, right? So that's really the only option. And when we remove it, he's no longer liked it after we remove the like. So we set liked to false. Else, if it doesn't exist, if Bob hasn't liked this post, we'll then add him as a like and then turn liked into true. Down here in our article detail view, we're just basically doing the same thing. Just when the page gets called, we're saying, hey, uh, we set like to false and then look up the post itself by that user and saying, hey, did Bob like this thing? If he did, like is true. Pass that into our context dictionary. Then on our page itself, we can say, hey, if, as long as the user's logged in, if they liked it, show them the button to unlike it. If they didn't like it, show them the button to like it, right? And that's all there is to it. Like I said, it is Friday here in Vegas and uh, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, quarantine is still going on, so it's not like I can do anything this weekend, but it's still almost the weekend and that's fun. But anyway, that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out and I really appreciate. And check out codeweb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeweb.com and we'll see you in the next video.